On December 28, 1912, San Francisco Mayor Sonny Jim Rolfe stared into a sea of 50,000 of his constituents who had gathered at the intersection of Geary and Kearney. The throngs of San Franciscans had assembled to savor a moment in history, the birth of the first publicly owned transit system in a major American city, the San Francisco Municipal Railway, Muni as it would come to be known. Happy birthday, Muni. Here's to the next hundred years. The birth of Muni had been a long time coming. For over 60 years, the city's transit system was a disjointed conglomerate of privately owned companies. Horse-drawn conveyances commingled with steam, electric, and cable-powered vehicles, creating a hodgepodge of transit options, none of them particularly satisfying to city residents. The city's transportation system, like the city itself, would undergo an upheaval of monumental proportions on April 18, 1906, during the Great San Francisco Earthquake. The devastation that ensued from the 8.4 tremor and the fires that raged for three days in its aftermath would change the face of San Francisco's transportation system once again. Facilitated by under-the-table payments by city boss Abe Roof, overhead wiring was strung on a decimated Market Street just 10 days after the quake, ushering in the era of the electric streetcar on Market Street. The writing was on the wall. The clamor had begun for a new civic experiment, the progressive vision of publicly owned utilities, including a public transit system owned by the people and for the people. The idea of a consolidated city-owned and operated transit system had finally begun to gain traction. And in 1909, in its fourth attempt at passage, voters went to the polls and approved a bond measure that would create a city-owned streetcar line. The People's Railway, as it was called, would become a reality three years later. On December 28, 1912, Mayor Sonny Jim Rolfe, to great fanfare, introduced the new Geary Electric Streetcar Line and the new San Francisco Municipal Railway, which he promised would become the nucleus of a mighty system of streetcar lines, which would someday encompass the entire city. San Francisco's selection to host the Panama Pacific International Exposition gave further incentive to expand the city's embryonic transit network. A decision was made to link the Panama Pacific's exposition grounds to downtown by way of a tunnel leading into Chinatown and North Beach. On December 29, 1914, the first streetcar was driven through the Stockton Tunnel. Just over two years after its birth, Muni had added five permanent lines. Construction of the J Church Line and the Twin Peaks Tunnel followed, as did the K, L and M lines that fanned out from West Portal. In 1928, the N. Judah Line opened, heading west to Ocean Beach through the new Sunset Tunnel. In 1944, San Francisco voters finally approved Muni's takeover of the Market Street Railway. By then, motor bus and trolley bus improvement had given those vehicles the ability to conquer San Francisco's hills. After the war, most of the streetcar lines would be replaced with motor or trolley bus service. In 1947, Mayor Roger Lapham advocated replacing the Powell Mason and Washington Jackson cable car line with motor coaches. And it appeared that San Francisco's iconic cable cars had seen their final days. Enter Friedel Klussman. Mrs. Klussman became the leader of the Citizens Committee to Save the Cable Cars. Arguing that the cable cars were a symbol of the city, Klussman championed a charter amendment to preserve the cable cars, which was placed on the November ballot. It passed overwhelmingly. The California Street Cable Railroad Company, which also ran lines on O'Farrell, Jones, and Hyde Streets, was purchased by the city in 1952. There were cutbacks to the cable car system, and as of 1957, only three lines would remain, the Powell Mason, Powell Hyde, and the California Street Lines, the three lines that exist today. In 1964, the cable car's future as part of San Francisco's transit system was sealed when it was proclaimed a National Historic Landmark.
In February 1980, Muni Metro was officially inaugurated with weekday and line service in the subway. During that same year, two years after Muni pioneered paratransit service in 1978, it received its first fleet of buses equipped with wheelchair lifts. In 1982, when the city's cable car system underwent a two-year shutdown, a historic trolley festival was established as an alternate attraction to the city's storied cable cars. The festival was a huge hit in the summer of 83 and would continue through the next four summers while a renewed interest in a permanent F-Line that would extend all the way to Fisherman's Wharf gained momentum. As of the year 2000, the F-Line to Fisherman's Wharf was in place. In 2007, Muni completed construction of its T-3rd line, extending rail service to the city's southeast corner and returning streetcar service to 3rd Street for the first time in 60 years. In the course of the last 100 years, Muni's diverse workforce, forged by men and women of innovation, has reflected the many cultures that flock to the city. Muni's groundbreaking anti-discrimination and accessibility policies crafted through the years have guaranteed equal opportunity for all. The city's Transit First policy mandates the course for the future as the SFMTA works diligently to increase mobility options, pursue multimodal transit alternatives, reduce the city's carbon footprint, and improve the quality of life for all residents. It continues to grow and improve its system with projects such as the Central Subway and Van Ness Bus Rapid Transit. During this centennial year, we reflect back on Muni's colorful history and look ahead to the future of our transit system. Driven not by wires or steel cable, but by the indomitable spirit of the people of San Francisco.